Hi, and welcome to Brazzaville in the Republic of Congo. You know, when I landed at the airport last night, it was like a weight lifted off my shoulders coming from Kinshasa. And how can it be so different in such a short distance, two cities separated only by a river? Well, it goes down to the culture and the history of the place that I'll get into in a moment. But here, you know, the streets are clean, well, cleaner, and you don't see the rubbish and the hustle and bustle. Yes, there's traffic and normal buzz of a busy city, but it's a lot more ordered and a lot more organized, and you don't feel that tension that you feel everywhere in Kinshasa. And they have coffee. Why is it that I had to fly when going from Kinshasa to Brazzaville? Well, there is a boat option. There is no bridge. So I could take a boat, I could, but every story I have read, an hour and a half it takes you to get through the customs point down to the boat on the Kinshasa side. And at all the stops, the health stop, the customs stop, the immigration stop, someone's checking your bag, someone's saying you've done something wrong, someone's trying to take a bribe, it's really difficult. It's not quite as organized as airports have to be. So because I don't like to pay bribes and I don't like the corruption of the thing, in the end I took the second shortest flight I've ever taken. And this is Pierre de Braza, the man who gave his name to Brazzaville. Now he tiddly bopped along here in the 1880s and did a deal with a local king, took possession of Congo for France. So opinion on him is split. Some say he was a humanist, some say he was a colonizer just like the rest of them. Some even claim him to be a rapist. Anyway. When he originally died, he was buried in Algeria, then his ashes were moved to France and eventually here, and are now inside the mausoleum together with his wife and children. Where does the Congo River get its name from? And therefore, the two Congos, where do they get their names? Well, the original African Kingdom of Congo, spelt with a K, gave its name to the two Congos. Quite simple, really. So why are there two Congos, and why are they so close to each other? Well. In the scramble for Africa, when the Europeans divided up Africa, the Congo River was a handy border between Belgian territory and French territory. At the end of the colonization, those here in Brazzaville looked more towards China and particularly Russia for support. So the Americans didn't back them and nor did the French. And the French and the Americans particularly backed Mobutu Sese Seko over in the Democratic Republic of Congo because he wasn't backed by the Russians. Now, I ask you this. Democratic Republic of Congo is an absolute basket case. Republic of Congo is comparatively, and I say comparatively, better. This place didn't have the influence of the Americans. That place did. Correlation or causation? I'll leave it to you to decide. And this basilica, this church, is the Basilica of St. Anne of Congo. It was actually designed by a Protestant architect, even though it's a Catholic church, a French guy, and construction started in 1943, but it wasn't consecrated until 1949. The reason they started building it during World War II is Brazzaville was technically the capital of France during World War II, as Charles de Gaulle and his soldiers kept fighting against Nazi Hitler. This was about the closest point they could get. So yeah, Brazzaville was the formal capital. Now, when they built this church, and as I said, wasn't consecrated till 1949, the green scales on the outside are supposed to represent the scales of the snake and are symbolic that evil is outside the church and good is inside the church, but they don't say anything about the fact that inside the church are the priests and the choir boys. So really, where is the evil? Now, it may have been consecrated in 1949, but it wasn't finished until 2011 when the spire and the tower were completed. And this is Place de Liberty with the Statue of Liberty, the Brazzaville version, which is very similar to the US version, but different words written on the tablet, unity, work and progress. And this is Namemba Tower. Namemba Tower is the tallest building in the entire country and is named after the highest mountain in the country. It was built in the 1980s with money borrowed from a French oil company and severely damaged during the Civil War in 1997. It cost 20 million to repair, which is more than it cost to even build. And now the operating costs are said to be 4 million a year, which is a huge controversy in the country that's as poor as this. Architectural Digest named it the ugliest skyscraper in the world. I reckon that's a bit harsh. 
Well, this is a nice little find in the middle of Brazzaville. Didn't expect it. Now, this is one hell of a way to recycle beer bottle tops. Now, I didn't expect to see this in Brazzaville. That's Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space, a Russian. And I slept in Yuri Gagarin's bed. So seriously, how close are Kinshasa and Brazzaville? Well, I'm standing here in Brazzaville. And that's Kinshasa. Yeah, in theory, you could build a bridge from here to there. The two things stopping it are the cost and the fact that the people here don't want the people there coming here and bringing their problems here. And having walked around Brazzaville today, I kind of agree with them. Although I did get one reminder today around the suspicion in Africa around white people as a car pulled up, seeing me videoing like this and just said, a spy, a spy, you are a spy, you're a spy. I'm like, you should be Australian, you know, Paul Bien Francais, blah, blah, blah. Those things can escalate. So urban conglomerations is a phrase used by geographers to describe multiple cities into one dense population, like Greater Tokyo or Greater New York or Greater Los Angeles. There is only one urban conglomeration that stretches across an international border. And guess which one it is? Kinshasa and Brazzaville. So why did the French and the Belgians decide to put both of their cities here? Why is Brazzaville here and not downriver and Kinshasa there and not upriver? Well, the answer is pretty simple. From here, upriver, the mighty Congo River is totally navigable deeply into the inside. That helps with the trade in ivory and slaves. But from here down is a series of rapids like the ones I was sitting on in the Kinshasa side. And basically for the 400 kilometers or so, probably closer to 500, between here and the ocean, the river is unnavigable. So this is the closest part to the ocean that the river becomes completely navigable upstream. Bonjour, mon ami. Ça va? Dis bonjour à tous mes amis en Australie. Dis bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Excellent. It seems everyone these days has to have an I heart sign, even Brazzaville. And is there no better place than standing in a road intersection in the middle of the night in front of the I heart Brazzaville sign to say goodbye from Brazzaville?